We're not going to show you how we can put the hasty harness onto a combatant who is in full gear. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that during this, this isn't necessarily something we want to do on the X at the point of wounding, depending on the circumstances. If we had some sort of cover or concealment right here, we may think about this option. The thing that the hasty harness has for it is multiple options after you apply it. After training on it, you should be able to apply a hasty harness within four to seven seconds. The main thing we want to worry about right now is when I showed you the first example, I can't reach around this combatant because of the kit that he's on. So everything that we need to do needs to be done from the front. This is accomplished through what we call a halo harness. That 22 feet of webbing is now basically thrown over our casualty. We take the end by their feet and we just throw it under his legs. As this rides up, I take my hands and I reach underneath his arms and I grab my two ends. I pull them up through the middle. I now have my harness attached. If I'm going to be lowering this casualty or dragging him, I want to take the center piece, the topmost horizontal piece, and stretch that up and over his head. This will allow the stability to go out a window and he'll stay nice and even. It allows when we drag him to gain a little bit more leverage point. I'll now show you how you can do a low profile drag with this. Partner comes in, if we're staying, maintaining low profile due to any cover or concealment that we have, we can get in a low crawling position, put this in for our inside shoulder. At this time we coordinate and crawl. If we get to a point where we're able to go a little bit higher profile, we can stay on the knee, drag him this way. If we can stand up, we can now stand up, fight if we have to, and move quickly. This is uh, just a real quick field expedient way that we can use the hasty harness for lowering and hauling operations. Uh, we've just drug our casualty to the wall uh, to either at the point where we're at a window or at a roof or going up through a ship through a hatch. Uh, we sit him and position him there. The two loops I now connect together with a carabiner. My partner holds on to that. I have multiple options as far as creating a high anchor. What we're going to do here is to show you one example. One is I can go over my substantial, which is anything that will hold this patient's weight. On this bar, I go over it four times. And what I have left hanging here is a carabiner, and we're actually using the revolver from the high threat extraction kit that has a built-in pulley, which will just make life a lot easier for us. I take my running end, which is going down to the ground, and I just loop it straight through that carabiner. I extend it to my partner, who connects it, onto that carabiner. Right now, what we have here is a hauling system. We're obviously at an angle. We will now, my rescuer and I, can exert force and pull our patient up. We can also take the extension of our rope and throw it down to rescuers who are down there who can put their body weight on and that will just lift him up. We now have him hoisted up. We can now kick him out the window, drop him off the roof, bring him up the hatch. When my partner and I are lowering him, we can make basically a human rack out of ourselves, take up the tension, and when it comes time to lowering him, we can lower him here. If we need a break, we'll break into each other, and that'll stop his descent.